This final speaker is one of the more special speakers that we have because he flew such a far way to come speak to you about a novel protocol. Um, and this is a this is a great thing. It's a trustless protocol. Um, everybody, please give a hand for Aram Jivanyan. Oh, okay, great. Um, and he's here to speak to us about Lelantis, uh, enabling full transaction privacy with one out of n proofs. Thanks again. Hello, everybody. So my name is Aram Jivanyan. I'm a cryptographer at Zcoin, which is a privacy cryptocurrency. And happy to be here today talking to you about Lelandus, our new privacy protocol for anonymous and confidential transactions. But before continuing my talk, I would like to thank you, Brandon and Sarang, for inviting me. And especially Sarang for the great job he did in uh, making POS implementation of Lelantus and its analysis. And also all the great feedback he provided me continuously during the last few, few months. Thanks. So as a brief outline of my talk, let me start by de describing ZeroCoin, the protocol which is currently empowering ZeroCoin network. We will discuss its limitation and show why we want to move on beyond it. Next, I will provide high-level characteristics of Lelantus, and then we go deeper into its cryptographic details, and then briefly compare with existing privacy techniques. And I will finish my presentation by identifying few open problems and also promising research directions which could help to improve Lelantus further. Okay, so. ZeroCoin is one of the first technologies which enabled highest anonymity of transactions. It enables the user to burn coins and then spend them to brand new coins. And during the spend, the zero knowledge proof was provided that the spent coins was one of the previously minted coins without revealing its origin. And although it provides high level of anonymity, it absolutely lacks confidentiality. Moreover, zero coin can work only with fixed denominated coins, uh, which results to a very pure user experience. And the proof sizes at zero coin were huge, about 25 kilobytes. And verification time was also quite high, about 300 milliseconds. Zero coin was using RSA accumulators, which means that it also requires some type of trusted setup to generate these accumulator parameters. Although Zcoin, we avoided of this trusted setup by using RSA challenge parameters generated in 1992. And at last but not least, now this protocol is absolutely broken. It's not secure at all. <laughs> so we created Lelantus to address this functional and performance limitations of Zcoin. It's a new, brand new design inspired by zero coin and confidential transaction concepts, which leverage one out of many proof constructions and bullet proofs, and it doesn't require trusted setup. Proof sizes are relatively small. They are about 1.5 kilobytes per each input spent. It enables efficient verification of transaction in pages by supporting large anonymity sets, sets of up to 50, 65,000 or even 100K. Lelantus enables to uh, work with coins of arbitrary amounts, so you and uh, also enables direct anonymous payments in some extent. <laughs> so let's see how it works. It provides two basic type of transaction. First one, mint transaction enables the user to mint his base coin into shielded coins of arbitrary values and provides a balance proof that the output coin values sum up with the base coin, minted base coin amount. And it allows to do joint split transaction, which means you can merge, split, and redeem coins without revealing the input coin origins and also preserving the confidentiality of both input and output coin amounts. It uses new cryptographic constructions called one out of n proofs to hide the origin of inputs, but also to, to generate the balance proof. Let's, let's see how it works. So one out of n proofs is a sigma protocol for knowledge of one out of n commitments, C0, C1, Cn minus one, being a commitment to zero. To be clear, we are working with Pedersen commitments. So, the idea behind this protocol is 
saying that one out of n commitments contains zero is equivalent saying that the, uh, there exists an index L so that the product of ci to the delta i l will be a commitment to zero. Delta i l here is the Kronecker delta. It equals to one only when the index is i is equal to l and zero otherwise. And assuming that the number n is a power of two, we can write these indexes i and l in binary. And we can reformulate what we want to prove as the product of ci to the product of delta ig lg being a commitment to zero. Does this make sense? <laughs> okay. So the prover starts by making commitment to his index L. So making commitment CL1, CL2, CLN to the bit values. And next, it engages into n parallel sigma protocols to demonstrate the knowledge of opening of these commitments to be bit binary values to LG equal to either zero or one. And during these proofs, n elements are revealed of the following form. F1, F2, Fn, where each Fg is equal to Lg times x plus Ag. Oops. Which is, oh, okay, here. So let's make the following denotions. Let's say denote Fg1 to be equal as Fg. And we can see that it's equivalent to be, it's equal to delta 1 Lg times x plus Ag, because it's simple. If the bit Lg is 1, then delta 1 Lg is also 1, and 0 otherwise. The same way, let's denote Fg0 as x minus Fg, which will be equal to delta 0 Lg x minus Ag. And for each index i, we can construct polynomials p a x as a product of these values f g i g. You see, it will, and uh, easy to see that uh, the polynomial p l x will be the only one polynomial of degree n amongst all these p zero, p one, p n minus one, because only the delta i l, delta l l will be equal to one, and it will be zero otherwise for all other indexes. So the prover can compute the product of CI to the product of these polynomials. And in its initial message, uh, the prover can also construct special ciphertext, uh, which will be able to cancel out these low order polynomials in this equation. Oops, sorry. Because the generation of these coefficients doesn't require the advanced knowledge of the value x, so it can be constructed by prover at the proof generation time. So we will end up by proving that the product of commitment ci to the power of product fgig multiplied with the product of these magic commitments will be commitment to zero. I hope this gave just some high level insight about how one out of n proof works. We cannot go deep into the rabbit hole here, but this is the whole protocol. This is the initial construction of Jens Crow and Markul Colways. You see, it's relatively simple. The proof and verification just fit in one page. That's it. And the one important thing to observe here is this proof transcript contains also, oops, I always mess up, so. Proof transcript contains also this value which is the encoding of the commitment randomness R. This is important because this will be used for generating the balance proof. Next, let's see how straightforward it is to build a zero coin like scheme having this on out of construction. A scheme which enables the user to mint coin of some fixed value and then spend it anonymously without revealing its origin. So for minting a coin, the user just generates a random coin serial number S and then commits to the serial number by using some randomness R. This will be the user coin which will be published to blockchain. And then the user wants to spend it, he just reveals the coin serial number S and revealing serial number is important also for preventing double spending attacks. And when the serial number is revealed, both prover and verifiers 
can homomorphically subtract the serial number from all commitments. Like if we have the previously minted commitments or previously minted coins, you can subtract this coin specific serial number from all commitments and result to a new set, new set of commitments where one of them will already be commitment to zero. And you just prove that you know which one is a commitment to zero. Lelantus is following to the same approach for ensuring anonymous anonymous spends of input input coins. But as we want to support coins of arbitrary amounts, here let's encode also the coin value into the commitment. So in Lelantus construction, coins are commitment to coin serial number by using a random value R and also the coin value. So we are using three independent generators. And uh, we love to refer to this construction as double-blinded commitments. And it's worth noting that the serial number is not generated randomly, but it's generated by hashing uh, some public key, freshly generated public key, which corresponding witness, referred also as spending key, will be used to sign the transaction when this coin is spent. So this diagram shows the one out of n construction scheme used in Lelantus. It's a modified version of more optimized protocol, not the, not, on the, not the original cross protocol, but an optimized version of it, and also contains some our own modifications, which are done to support double-blinded commitments and also the balance proof generation process. The important thing to observe here is that this proof transcripts contains, uh, uh, publishes these two values, ZV, and ZR, which are the encodings of the coin correspondingly of the coin value V and coin randomness R. So assuming that the joint split transaction outputs N new coins and it consumes N old coins, the transaction transcript will contain these output coins and also N old one out of many proofs for each spend input. And all verifiers can independently do the following computations. They can, multi they can compute the value A, which is the product of output coins to the power x m, which, based on the homomorphic properties of the online commitment scheme, will be commitment to the sum of all output coins. Yeah. And verifiers can also compute the value B as a commitment of the sum of this value ZV and the sum of the value ZR multiplied with the product of some auxiliary data which was also contained in the proof transcript. And the result will be a commitment to the sum of all input coins. So without revealing these input values or without even revealing which coins have been spent, we will end up having commitment to the sum of all input coins. And if the transaction balance is preserved, it's already simple. The prover, it's enough for the prover to provide a proof of representation of the value A over B with respect to these generators G and H2. Okay, this is about uh, how we make anonymous spans and how we provide balance proofs. So now let's see how we enable page verification of these proofs. A verification of one out of n proofs is linear from the number of n, and it boils down to this big multi-exponentation. Here, uh, th uh, th here the generators are all transaction specific. Because, as you remember, maybe from the z as we described in the zero coin, uh, while, uh, while while describing the zero coin scheme, these generators are computed by taking this commitment CI and dividing to G to the power ST, where ST is the transaction is the coin serial number spent during the transaction. The good thing in our setup is that during the spend, these serial numbers are explicitly revealed. So we can leverage that fact that the serial numbers ST are published on the blockchain and incorporate that 
into the verification operation and reformulate the verification operation with the alternative, uh, alternative equation where the generators will be transaction agnostic because the C and the ST are already on this right side of the equation. This enables to perform verification of many proofs in patches and helps to save n exponentiation per each extra proof when we work within the same anonymity sets. This results to huge savings. As you can see from this table, the average cost of one proof verification within the anonymity set of size 16,000 can be as low as 12 milliseconds. And within the anonymity set of size 65,000, it can be as low as 35 milliseconds. At last, let's discuss how we enable direct anonymous payments when the outputted coins can be spent only by dedicated recipients. For in, our, in our structure, in order to spend this coin, which has the following structure, it's a commitment to the coin serial number S, the user should possess all the secret values, the coin, serial no, the, the coin value, randomness, and also the witness or spending key, which was used to generate the, ser the serial number. And we can use some Diffie-Hellman-like key exchange process to make this witness accessible only to the recipient. Like in very simple uh, setup, the receiver can generate new public address, and the sender can generate a random Y and uh, create a public key, which witness is accessible only to the receiver. Of course, this can, be, this can work also with dual key-based uh, stealth addresses protocol. Okay, uh, I'm sorry if you will find some inaccuracies in this number, but just to highlight that, just to briefly compare Lelantos with uh, other privacy techniques, we see that uh, the proof sizes and verification times are quite comparable with existing Monero's performance while, we, while ensuring larger anonymity sets, which will make this construction more immune against different types of attacks, including flooding attacks or tr transaction graph analysis attacks. Of course, it's hard to beat zero cache performance, but unlike zero cache, uh, we don't require trusted setup. We rely only on standard cryptographic assumption, and which is more important in my opinion, we don't use complex arithmetic circuits. So it uses just simple cryptographic construction, which is easy to implement, easy to test, easy to cryptoanalyze, easy to implement on any platform. So just as a conclusion, uh, this is a new protocol, and there is a lot that can be done to improve it further. Of course, we would love to see an alternative approach for direct anonymous payments, which results to untraceable, untraceable coins. But the research problem which takes me busy at this moment full time is how to scale one out of improves. I believe it's possible, so, and uh, now we have some progress on building two layer one out of M proofs, which promise to significantly reduce the proof time. And also, I think it's possible to design, I'm sorry, to design more efficient M out of N schemes. If we can design efficient M out of N schemes, this will, this will optimize transaction size with, with multiple inputs. And also, it will be interesting to see how we can support multi-asset transfer or also enable auditability of transactions for enterprise use cases. Thank you. Happy, happy to answer questions. Thank you for your talk. Um, I think Lantis is very, very cool. Um, my question is, um, so you know, you're working with Zcoin and you know, moving away from, uh, from the zero coin protocol, there is an intermediate protocol you guys are working on. Um, is, there, is there kind of a timeline for when and if 
Zcoin intends to deploy Lolantis? Would it oh. be in its current form, or is the intent to wait until you, you get some of these kind of efficiency issues uh, taken care of, like you were talking about? Yeah, sure. So uh, the, the, our current release, which we call Sigma, which is basically zero coin construction based on one out of n schemes, which I have discovered, is already on our testnet. And it will, be, it will go to mainnet very soon. And uh, we plan to have Lelandus on testnet at least early 2020, next year. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for your talk. Um, can you describe uh, some of the privacy concerns in regards to a recipient of funds maybe needing to churn their funds uh, before, uh, in order to help protect their privacy with Lelantis? Uh, you, 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 I, I, maybe I can go back to, oh, no, it's not possible already. So if I answer the question right, uh, in, uh, when, 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 there is pay, when the sender send the coin to recipient, it generates a serial number, and in order to spend the coin, the serial number should be published on the blockchain, which means that the sender can track this, can, can identify the serial number, and use he can identify the spend of this coin. That's why it's advised the recipient to self-spend the coin immediately after receiving it. Okay, thanks. It, Let's give it up for Aram. Thank you. Thank you again Thank you. for taking us out on a very positive Thanks. note. Uh, ending this conference on a positive note with sublinear ring signatures is pretty cool. Anyway, thank you all for coming and being a part of the first annual Monero Conferenzo. This has been an honor. Thank you very much. Once again, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, My Monero, Cypher Market. I'm going to forget somebody. Um, I'm not going to try. Oh, the back of the badge. I would like to thank Cake Wallet, Cypher Market, the entire Monero community, Globy, Insight, uh, my nonprofit, Magic, uh, the Monero outreach team who made all the badges and the t shirts and did all of the graphics for the video and everything. XMR Halen and Thunder Rosa basically just nailed it. Um, we have the Monero Talk team, our media partners. We have Morph Token and Fire Life. Um, F File Life? I are. Yeah, yeah, thumbs up. F yeah, cool. Um, my Monero. Simus Corporation for flying out Howard, Tari for flying out uh, Rick, uh, Globy. This has been an honor, and I want to express again, this conference belongs to the community, and I cannot be more proud of the community I belong to. 